It's always game day, as that big voice just told you, brought to you by Smiley One and Brian, Northeast Ohio's premier heating and cooling solution. He is Daryl Ryder, and I'm Andy Baskin. And, man, we are feeling good after that big bronze victory over the Tennessee Titans. Um, you know, Daryl, I, I think it might be just what the doctor ordered because a lot of good things happen, but there's plenty to work on as they head into the Ravens game next week. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the Browns uh, coming off the – two dominating uh, performances on their home turf, uh, in which they've allowed a grand total of drum roll, please. Da, 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 da. Wow. I, think about that, right? I mean, they allowed three points to the Bengals, three points to the Titans. Uh, both of those, uh, they won uh, comfortably. Um, so yeah, they're, they're feeling pretty good. The defense is getting all kinds of love uh, the day after uh, the uh, beat down of the Titans. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I did find one thing for the defense needing to work on. There's a few things the offense still needs to work on uh, with the Ravens coming to town uh, this week for a tough AFC North uh, battle uh, with, uh, I, I guess, uh, first place or at least a share of first place here early in the season on the line. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, what a difference a week makes, right? Sky is no longer falling in Brownstown. Yeah, I mean, headlines like, can the season be salvaged? I still, like, to me, blows my mind away. Daryl, you said there was one thing the defense needed to work on. What do you think? Turnovers. Turnovers. They've Forcing created, them, right? Only created two turnovers. They've had a fumble recovery and an interception. So those are the uh, the, the two. The That's the one thing I should say that the defense, like that you can legit nitpick, that they're not doing enough of. Uh, outside of that, like, <laughs> They, they're dominating. It, it's really incredible how much uh, this defense is dominating. I'm going to pull up the numbers here in a second. But let, let me, while you're pulling up the numbers, let me just bring this point out. Does it matter if you create turnovers if you are not letting the other team even have a play inside the 30? I mean, does it really matter? Because I thought the same thing. I was like, you know, it'd be nice to see a scoop and score here. Nice to be, especially after thinking, you know, ball don't lie on that bad play for uh for cooper that you know he never stepped out of bounds and i'm like you know what ball don't lie they ended up with a field goal but they got shorted five four points on that so uh, you know you just you just wonder hey it's okay i mean if they're not forcing the turnovers then so what if the other team can't get on the board it doesn't matter uh i i can, i don't know should we consider three and outs turnovers because they get a lot of three and outs yeah i mean that's I, that's the natural turnover right yeah. All right. So are, are you ready for some defensive numbers for the Cleveland Browns? Sock it to me. Sock it to me. Laughing. Points allowed by the deep by the defense, not total points to team because we're not going to include the, the two touchdowns uh, that the Pittsburgh Steelers scored. Points allowed by the Browns defense, 18, four field goals, one touchdown. Joe Woods gave up 17 from behind yesterday in case you're keeping score at home. Go ahead. Uh, total yards allowed, 491. Can you believe that? Wow. F only 491 yards in three games? What, what did I tell you how much they're giving up on the ground? 156 yards up uh, on the ground. Joe Woods' defense used to give that up in a half. That's and true. the Browns have allowed that in three games, right? Right. Uh, first downs allowed, 21 and two of those by penalties. So they've actually only given up 19 first downs on defense, right? And it's truly seven per game because they were 14 going into this Tennessee game. Yeah. It's truly an average of seven per, per game. Yeah. Uh, on third down, opponents are converting 19.5%. That is a 20% reduction from a year ago. Opponents were converting 39.5% on third down. Uh, against uh, the Browns, uh, wow. eight of forty-one. That's what they are. They were two of twelve. The Titans were two of twelve against the Browns on third down. Um, rush yards per game, fifty-two average. Wow, that's that, amazing. That leads the league against the Pack, <laughs> one hundred and eleven point seven yards per game. That also leads the league. Opponent completion percentage. I'm going to let you guess this one, Andy. What do you think Opponent, quarterbacks are competing okay. against the Browns? Without looking the at my Steelers, I'm just thinking the Steelers were complete garbage in that category. 
Joe Burrow struggled, and Ryan Tannehill was probably the best of the three. So I'm going to go 16%. Huh? Go ahead. What's the percentage? You're saying, what are they completing percentage-wise? Yeah, did you just say 16%? I said, well, you made me think this is going to be some astronomical number. It is an astronomical, but, like, be realistic about it. It's 20. 20%. It's, it's 48.3%. Oh, they're completing half their passes? Yeah. Oh, well, that doesn't sound that doesn't sound as astronomical as sixteen percent. It 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 is. And considering I mean, Pittsburgh was atrocious, percent of his passes and he sucked. Right. Let me if say that again. If you're a quarterback completing around fifty six percent of your passes, you're not any good. Well, that's that's uh, okay. So if the Browns are holding them to less than fifty percent completion percentage. Yeah, that's astronomical. 16% is just unrealistic and insane. Well, you made it. You teed me up like it was some number that was <laughs> blowing them out of the water. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm like, Steelers absolutely suck. They weren't very good. And <laughs> that might be what I struggled. Ever, by what were the – so, uh, sock it to me on the uh, – I'll say that twice in, in one podcast. Um, what were the percentages by game then? Uh, hang on a second. I'm going to – I got to get my – I got to get my Browns Bible for a second here. Oh, here we go. I gotta look this up. If you're listening, oh, here we go. We, we but uh, so is, we don't. So what do you go to the Bible for? We're talking about this oh, season. I had to print off a media guide. This is it. And so, you printed that? Yeah, because the Browns don't give out media guides. This, What'd you do? This find a, a Kinko's somewhere? Yeah. Uh, Next to the last. Uh, uh, this is from 2018, by the way. So oh, this is the 2018. Here, I can do this in about 30 seconds while you're doing yeah, that. Yeah, you no, know, it, it in in the end of season. I, I print off the, the the final numbers from the season. Let me give you some. Uh, do they give me completion percentages here? I, I don't know. You have the Bible in front of you. Yeah, they do. Okay, so uh, let's see. Baker Mayfield in 2020 was 62.8 percent. Okay, uh, let's go. Uh, 2023, the quarterbacks were completing. Jacoby Brissett was completing 64 percent. Ah, Deshaun Watson completed 58.2 percent. Okay. Oh, I got to do the math. Also perspective on what exactly. So uh, Joe, let's see here. Burrow was about just 31. I'll give you. By the way, numbers. Baker Mayfield, 31, just under 50. Yes. In 2019, completed 59.4%. Uh, That's not a good percentage. Uh, let's go to the 1 in 15, 0 oh, in 16 years. Completion. Kenny Pickett was 15 of 30. Like all of these guys are 50%. And I thought Pickett was, he had 222 years. Josh McCown with a completion percentage of 54 and a half. That's bad. Um, Deshaun Kaiser, 53.6%. That's pretty awful. Again, I'm just trying to give you, I'm teaching. I, I got it. Oh, okay, Master. Master On, Yoda. Uh, completion percentages here. Ryan Tannehill was 13 of 25. So virtually every guy. All three quarterbacks that the Browns have faced, math is not my forte, as you know that. It was about 50%, just under 50%. By the way, Brian Hoyer? Yes, 97%. Incorrect. Brian Hoyer in 2014 completed 55.3%. Johnny Menzel, 514 Yeah. Did he even know what the play was? Brandon Whedon, 574 Jason Campbell, remember him, that legend? 56.8 Brandon Hi Reed. everyone 56. and welcome to the podcast that enjoy everyone enjoys Daryl Reads the Media Guide. Well, I'm just trying to explain Coming up next, radio affiliates. <laughs> I'm just trying to explain to you what a good quarterback completion percentage is since you I hear you. I hear you. You, you brought it up and I like, the fact that the Browns are uh, uh, holding Yes, these quarter. guys are only throwing 50% of the time. They're completing their passes. By the way, I they hope suck. We do this. Say it again. I hope everyone there it is. Get the floor. That's how, how many pages is that stupid media guide you printed out there? Uh, about 600. 600. How many trees did Daryl Ryder kill during this episode of It's Always Game Day? I would have killed none if the Browns would print media guides for us these days, but they don't. So, oh, well, so that's your fault then. No, it's their fault. They're saving the earth. You're, I like you're, 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 you're killing the earth. Just letting I, you know. I, I like having a book. Hang on, PETA on line one. <laughs> no, PETA. Rep. You mean Greenpeace? Would you? No, I mean PETA, because you're killing animals with this conversation. It's taken forever. Our defense looks pretty damn good, isn't that the bottom line, Daryl? Isn't that the, the bottom line? At. What? That's kind of what I was getting at. 
Yes, we could have saved 10 minutes of this podcast just by saying that. Well, I'll you, say the same you thing. You were not impressed with the 48.3%. It's not that I wasn't impressed. It's just you said, you say, just give me a number. I'm like, okay, 16%. You have no perspective of what that means. I absolutely have a perspective. No, you what don't. You thought, yeah, Daryl, 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 they complete half their passes. That's it. Okay. Are you done? No. Do you need me to go Lima on your ass? Because I'm about to go Lima. I'm not in the mood. Knock it off. Okay. Well, I am. Let's throw down, brother. Let's throw down. Uh, all right. So here's the deal. Actually, we, I don't uh, have a voice to yell and scream right now. I, I, do I. So on the morning show. And morning, by the way, I'm starving. I haven't eaten in a day. So let's uh, keep going. Yes. On the, on the morning show. show I almost lost my voice in the middle of my conversation with them. And on the oh, afternoon boy. show, I almost lost my voice. So you might get lucky. I may lose my voice on this podcast. Okay. Baskin and Kermit the Frog. It'll be great. It's better than me coughing all show long. <laughs> I sit there and I look at those guys. and I'm like, can you turn off your mics for one second just so I can clear my throat? And, then, and so then I get all these. Baskin, why do you go to work when you're sick? I'm not sick. I have allergies. Okay. Can we just face it? There are millions of American <laughs> that suffer from allergies. They feel my plight. They feel my blunder. Let's come back in a moment and let's talk a little bit about the offense because Deshaun Watson really changed his tune uh, in this game, and we're going to get to that next time. It's always game day in Cleveland.